Good morning, Tampa Bay. Let's get your day started. This is ABC Action News, taking action for you. Hi, good Friday morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here on ABC Action News Plus as we continue to track the heavy rain that's been plaguing I-4 over the last couple of hours, finally beginning to see this shift out to the east, well east of I-75, but we've seen two to four inches of rain just this morning along parts of I-4. So in Hillsborough County along I-4 to the south from Plant City to Tampa, we actually have a flood advisory where we picked up upwards of four inches of rain in a few isolated spots, but you can really see just over the last hour, this has cleared out and pushed most of the heavy rain to the east. The exception, southeastern hills Hillsborough County, south of Lithia, east of Waimama, where we are continuing to see the thunderstorm action in these areas. In and around Lakeland, we pick up upwards of two to four inches of rain as well. So even though there's not an actual advisory here for flood concerns, watch out for that ponding on the roads as this heavy rain continues to shift off to the east as well. So along Winter Haven, Haines City, 17 and 27, 98, and the Polk Parkway, all still covered up in some pretty heavy rain for the next hour or so. As we look at your hour by hour from this morning to this afternoon, we're not done with the rain just yet. However, it will not be as widespread for the rest of the day as what we've been seeing for the last several hours. So we're into the 70s now. We're back into the lower 80s later on today, and we also have more weather on the way for tomorrow, Sarah, some of which could be severe, and we definitely don't want to hear that, especially compared to what you're looking at out there with the traffic right now. Not a pretty start to our Friday. Yeah, not at all. Right now, the biggest issue is for drivers who use 275 northbound to get from St. Pete into Tampa. So uh, that's a lot of people, and right now, as you work your way toward the Howard Franklin, you're going to hit some really slow traffic, all because of an earlier accident that happened. Uh, in the four o'clock hour, and it's still affecting drivers here. In fact, uh, the delays just now spiking uh, to uh, about double the uh, normal time here. It's a 30 minute ride between the Skyway and the Howard Franklin, a 14 minute delay between Gandy and uh, the Howard Franklin. So if I were you, I would take the Gandy Bridge into Tampa instead of the Howard Franklin this morning because these delays are only going to continue to build here uh, unless they wrap that work up soon. This is 275 southbound down in Manatee County, really close to uh, High Tower near the 75 and 275 interchange where we have all but one lane blocked and that is slowing down drivers. If you are headed in the opposite direction toward the Skyway, it's going to be a painless ride. 10 minutes northbound, 9 minutes southbound. Also tracking an accident on 75 northbound and near 60, not terribly delaying drivers. There is a little bit of a backup though between Gibson and Drive and the Salmon, so watch for that. Plan C into Tampa actually not an issue right now, which is quite surprising. Seven minutes between Alexander and McIntosh. That's a very good drive time in that area, but we've got a lot of problems elsewhere. Idea. Yes, we do. Take care on the roads. Those roads are slick out there this morning. Of course, we'll check back in with Jason and Sarah throughout the morning to track the rain. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on ABC Action News Plus. I'm Dia Riley. And I'm James Tully. We start with a major decision involving your right to vote. A federal judge reversing wide-reaching election laws passed in Florida during the 2021 legislative session. In a major ruling, the Tallahassee judge called some of the election law changes unconstitutional. Those changes included scaling back the availability of ballot drop boxes, restrictions on providing aid like water and snacks to people waiting in line to vote and stringent rules on voter registration drives. The judge claims the law violates the Voting Rights Act as well as the 14th and 15th Amendments. They accuse lawmakers of enacting some of the provisions to discriminate against black voters. The ruling goes on to say that any future similar voting rules must seek federal approval. A strange turn of events after Tampa City Councilman Orlando Goods was accused of sexual harassment. We broke the news yesterday morning at 9 that he was stepping down his chair but would not resign as City Council member. However, the former aide who brought the allegations against Goods did not speak yesterday afternoon like her attorney said she would at the news conference a law firm scheduled. The attorney, though, came up to the podium and said the firm is no longer representing the aide, but did not say why. We're working right now to try to get some answers. Meanwhile, people in the community that we talked with are split on whether Goods should step down altogether. Statement today is Orlando Goods must step down. He is sowing seeds of chaos within the community. Let us not be separated because of this nonsense. Let it play out in the court of law. Justice will prevail. A group protested outside City Hall last night in support of Goods. Tampa City Councilman Guido Maniscalco now takes over as the chair of the council. 
Russian forces have been having handed over control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant back to Ukraine in Mariupol. Russia now claims today it will reopen a humanitarian corridor out of the city. It comes as the humanitarian crisis swells to more than 4 million people seeking refuge. Kids, bags, faces of desperation pack into a bus station while others are forced to camp out in cold, rainy conditions. A new study shows that pregnancy doubles the risk of a breakthrough COVID-19 infection. The study was published Thursday in Epic Research. It analyzed the effects of certain health conditions on those who had breakthrough infections. A breakthrough infection is getting diagnosed after being fully vaccinated. Pregnant women have a nearly two times greater risk. People with organ transplants have a 1.8 times greater risk. And those with immune deficiencies have a 1.6 times greater risk. Researchers urge those who are at higher risk to take more precautions. The Tampa Bay Bucks introduced Todd Bowles replacement last night. Inside linebackers coach Larry Foote and defensive line coach Casey Rogers will take over as co-defensive coordinators. They're taking over for Bowles, who is now the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We told you how Bowles is replacing former head coach Bruce Arians, who's now going into a front office role, and he wanted the succession plan to go off without a hitch. Yesterday, Bowles talked about his vision for the team. I'm just going to be me. I, I cannot be him. I don't expect to duplicate the things he's done. He's won a Super Bowl in the division. I want to duplicate that part, but probably with some tweaks in a different way. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Arian said once he knew quarterback Tom Brady was returning, he felt like now is the time to give up coaching and let Bowles lead the team. I right, want to check in now with Jason Adams watching rain out there this morning. You said it's finally beginning to slow down, right? Yeah, Jason? especially for St. Pete as we look live right now here from our Freedom Boat Club camera. Of course, overcast skies continue, but the heavy rain has shifted out of the city. It's also shifted east of I-75 in Hillsborough County. So in Tampa, where we picked up some localized flooding, we're getting a break. However, look out in the west. The Gulf of Mexico still firing up a few downpours about 50 50 miles to our west, so we're not completely done with the rain by any stretch, but the heaviest from this morning is now really focused in here in Polk County, where we've seen widespread thunderstorms for about two to three hours straight now along and south of I-4. So Winter Haven, Lakeland, Lake Wales, Point Siena, also over to Haines City. These are areas that have picked up substantial rain just within the last couple of hours. So again, ponding on the road is our main concern. Thankfully, nothing severe, and we could see some severe weather. They're trying to make a return tomorrow afternoon. We are actually under a level two out of five risk for severe weather. I'll talk about what that means for your Saturday straight ahead in Florida's most accurate forecast. But Sarah, you're still monitoring that incident over on I-275. Yeah, but you know what, Jason? I'm starting to see some good signs here. Traffic is actually beginning to move a lot better through this area near Roosevelt uh, for quite a bit of time. It was really, really slow. So this is a positive sign. I'm hopeful that maybe that drive time is going to drop. Right now, it's still hanging around at 29 minutes between the Skyway and the Howard Franklin. That delay, a 13-minute uh, ride between the Gandy and the Howard Franklin. So a small stretch that has stop and go traffic, but again, starting to see some positive signs through there. Uh, until this completely disappears, you might want to consider using 4th Street North over to Gandy to get into South Tampa from St. Pete instead of using the Howard Franklin. Right now, the Gandy still is looking fine, as is the Courtney Campbell. So keep that in mind. I-4 westbound, actually not too bad at this moment between 75 and 275. But of course, we do have a, a lot of other abnormal areas seeing delays because of the rain including some stretches of 75 southbound approaching I-4 as well as uh, 75 down in Manatee County. I'll take you to all those little problem spots in just a few minutes, Dia. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Coming up next, two teens attack a 76-year-old man in Florida, but they picked the wrong senior citizen to mess with. Well, police say the two attackers were waiting for before they ambushed him. And I'm introducing you to an inspiring woman who went from being diagnosed with breast cancer to competing in the Skyway 10K, and she did it in just a year. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Finney following uh, this rainy, rainy Friday morning commute. Right now, a live look at I-4 Eastbound and Westbound out in Plant City. And would you look at that? Traffic is actually flowing really fine between Plant City and 75. This is unusual. It makes me wonder if a lot of people decided to maybe go into work a little bit later, try and avoid the rain during the morning drive, because uh, this is definitely not your typical, uh, you know, volume on I-4 Westbound into Tampa at this time. Positive signs on 275 
down northbound near Roosevelt as well over in St. Pete. It looks like some of that blockage has cleared and that means the drive time is going down between the Skyway and the Howard Franklin. It dropped by five minutes since we last checked in. So you might not need to use the Gandhi as a detour here. We'll take a look at some other trouble spots in just a few minutes. Over to you. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Take a look at this video here. Two teens attack a 76 year old man at an ATM watch. They're going to come up right there. They're trying to rob him. That 76 year old did not go down without a fight. He fought back. Watch there. See the teens? They took off after there. Yeah, decided it wasn't worth it. I want to show you a different angle now from the ATM camera. You can see the teens walk up behind the senior citizen. Police say the teens waited until he had the money in his hands from the ATM before they ambushed him. This morning, police are looking for both teens. They are worried if they were bold enough to attack a 76 year old man in broad daylight that they will do it again. On this first day of April, we're taking action for you. We're finding out the best things to buy this month to save you some money. This is a really good time to buy her mom, your mom, her Mother's Day gift early. That's because a lot of jewelry is on sale. Prices, though, will likely spike before Mother's Day next month. The same goes for flowers. You can save by paying for your flower delivery now and then scheduling it for Mother's Day. And look for savings on things like gardening supplies. Starting April 7th, stores like the Home Depot and Lowe's hold what they call Spring Black Friday. You'll also see sales on last season's clothing like light sweaters and spring styles. Mm -hmm. There'll be some good Mother's Day presents mm -hmm. coming this woman's way. Now to a positively Tampa Bay story highlighting an inspirational woman. Don't let the bad moments overtake you. That's what breast cancer survivor Shannon Gunn tells me. She not even one year ago was diagnosed and just last month she competed in the Skyway 10K race. I talked with her about her impressive journey. I was healthy as, as, as I could be being a trainer. I worked out all the time. I don't smoke, I don't drink. Shannon Gunn doesn't just practice healthy living. She has several degrees in it. I felt honestly like he had the wrong patient information. <laughs> a personal trainer just a few months from having a clear mammogram, you can understand what a shock it was when Shannon was diagnosed with breast cancer. That's a million dollar mystery that we don't fully understand. That's Shannon's oncologist, Dr. Vic Malotra. She followed his initial treatment plan, a double mastectomy, then maybe she'd be okay. We did the mastectomy, they took out eight lymph nodes and there was cancer in all eight lymph nodes. That made it uh, mandatory that we did some more treatments, uh, so she had to go through chemotherapy. Five long months of chemo treatments followed. I have three beautiful kids, uh, 16, 11, and six, and, and, a, and a wonderful husband. And for me, so I had to stay positive. I, I needed to, to keep the morale up um, for myself and for my family. Shannon also kept her eyes on two major goals, ringing a bell to signify the end of her chemo, and before that, competing in the Skyway 10K race. I kept telling Dr. Maholtra come January, started in January, I said, you know, March 6th, I'm gonna be doing this race. He goes, well, we'll see. Nope, March 6th, we're gonna be, I was adamant I was gonna be doing this race. And alongside her best friend, Amy, Shannon did it. It was 6.2 miles uh, and I felt like I felt like I ran a marathon after I was finished, but I finished it. I love this thing. It means it means the world to me. It's my comeback. It's my comeback medal. She's a very, very uh, unique, special, inspirational person to me personally, and it is true. When I've been on my treadmill or my stair stepper and I said, I can't go no more. I said, no, I can go two more minutes, thanks to her. Then, less than two weeks later, it was time to finish another chapter in this life-altering journey. That's why I get emotional. Okay. Ring this bell three times well. It's told to clearly say my treatment is done. It's the halfway mark for me, you know, I still have radiation, like I said, and I still have a couple surgeries, but for me to ring that chemo bell and to know that I walk through that with grace and dignity and my head held high. This course is run and I am on my way. It was, it was pretty amazing to ring that bell. Okay, look, we don't have a lot of time here, so I said everything I want to say in a post on my Facebook page about this and why it's personal to me and why I felt I was the right person to try and tell her story. It's really all about her, and you can learn a lot. I learned a lot. 
it's very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. And she's such an inspiration for so many people. Every absolutely. time you think you can't go anymore, you can't do it. Think about her and the others. Absolutely. Here's a live look at the radar right now. Notice we've got a nice break happening here in Tampa and St. Pete, but just offshore out to the west, more rain developing. This will move on shore Pinellas County within the next five to 10 minutes. The smaller area, but the larger area of rain that's going to take about another 35 to 45 minutes before it starts to approach us the beaches here in Pinellas County. Now I four south is where we see the heaviest rain, but it's now shifted inland, especially here in parts of Polk County. So in and around Tampa, St. Pete, just some spotty rain at this time, but where we're still looking at the uh, isolated flood concerns that's happening for those of you from Lakeland over to Winter Haven, Haines City, down to Lake Wales, all of us here along 27, 17, 98 and in and around the Polk Parkway, all south of I four seeing this rain continuing for about another 30 to 45 minutes here. So that's what it looks like right now. As we look at the hour by hour from this morning to this afternoon, we're going to go from the 70s back into the lower to middle 80s later today. We could even see some sunshine sneaking through from time to time, but overall I anticipate more clouds than sun. This is the cold front we've been talking about all week long, finally here, and unfortunately it's going to hang out for a couple of days, meaning we're going to hold on to scattered shower and storm chances for the next several days. So as we look at Florida's most accurate seven day, the best chance of rain was this morning. It's going to be more spotty throughout the rest of the day today, but hold on to the umbrella. As we get to your Saturday outlook, 80% chance of rain, but great news about that is it's not going to be during the morning or the early afternoon. It's going to be mid to late afternoon. We'll start to see some rain coming through. So through 8 a.m. dry, just an isolated shower storm at that point. Same deal by noon, but look at how Futurecast really fills in the rain from 4 to midnight, and we could also unfortunately see some severe weather during that time as well. So I'll be here over the weekend tracking any potential severe storms. We'll hold on to some scattered storm chances from Sunday into next week as we're in a little bit of an unsettled weather pattern over the next seven days. Sarah? All right. Thank you, Jason. Hey, this is a great side. Traffic flowing freely on 275 North bound working their way toward the Howard Franklin. No need to take the Gandhi as a detour anymore. That drive time uh, dropping to just about a normal level. Usually it's at 12 minutes between the Skyway and the Howard Franklin. Right now we are at 15, so don't avoid 275 northbound any longer at this moment. Overall, pretty fortunate this morning. I'm wondering if a lot of people looked outside and said, nah, I'm not going to go in today. I'm going to work from home if that is a possibility for them because uh, overall seeing lighter than usual traffic uh, even on I-4 Westbound. We'll be right back. Good morning, Tampa Bay. Let's get your day started. This is ABC Action News, taking action for you. Good morning, Tampa Bay. It is 723. I'm James Tully. Governor DeSantis is being sued for signing what critics call the Don't Say Gay bill earlier this week. The federal lawsuit filed yesterday morning alleges the state's new law violates the U.S. Constitution. Plaintiffs include LGBTQ rights groups, gay parents, even young transgender students. Their concern is a provision in the law that prohibits instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in K through third grade classrooms or in a manner that's not deemed age appropriate. The governor says the law protects young children from a mature curriculum. Well, it almost sounds like something from the future, a self-driving bus being tested in Polk County. The big impact it could have on the city's downtown area. That's coming up on ABC Action News Plus, free on Roku, Amazon Fire and Apple TV. Jason Adams coming up has a look at this rainy forecast this morning. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm meteorologist Jason Adams in for Greg D today, looking at a live look from our Rivergate Tower camera over downtown Tampa. Wow, what a difference a couple of hours makes from the very heavy rain and even flood concerns we had for parts of I-275 and I-4 in and around Tampa to now just seeing some leftover cloudiness, but we're not done with the rain just yet. Look offshore. We've got more development of showers and thunderstorms. These are all moving east on a stalled cold front, so no longer is a cold front. We call it a stationary boundary, and it's going to be with us through the next couple of days, meaning we're going to hold on to scattered shower and storm chances. Not all bad news because we could use the rain, but the bad news is it's the weekend and we certainly don't want to have any of your plans washed out. But here's a look at where we're seeing some of the heaviest rain right now. It's mainly been confined to Polk County within the last hour from Lakeland to Bartow to Haines City and then points east over toward uh, Winter Haven as well, seeing some of this heavy rain. So we're continuing to watch this move east, but hold on to the umbrella because we'll likely need them at least through the weekend with even more rain expected tomorrow. started. This is ABC Action News, taking action for you. You're waking up to a rainy Friday morning. Some areas are getting a break from the storms right now, but more are on the way this morning and this weekend. Get ready for it. 
Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on ABC Action News Plus. I'm Dia Riley. And of course, when we have weather like this, you know, Sarah, that puts you on high alert back there. Yeah, definitely. But overall, right now at least, <laughs> we're actually <laughs> in decent shape. <laughs> good to hear. I think a lot of people, you know, yeah. looked at the forecast and said, I'm not doing this yeah, today. I slept in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because at four o'clock this morning when we were coming in, you were already yes. saying that I-275 had it a spin out. There was a truck. Yeah. yeah, it was just such heavy rain. And thankfully, well, like you said, a little bit of a break right now. But we're already seeing more developing just to the west of Pinellas County. And this is going to move on shore within the next one to three hour period. So if you do have beach plans today, it's not going to be the prettiest at all whatsoever as we continue to see more of the heavy rain again about 25 miles to the west of Indian Rocks Beach and the inland rain has shifted east of I-75 and it's going to continue to stay in our inland spots here. This batch of rain moving over more out of Polk County into Osceola County, Osceola County, I should say within the next hour or so, but watch out for some localized flooding here in parts of Polk County as well as Hillsborough County. We picked up two to four inches of rain since three o'clock this morning. Nothing severe at this time, thank goodness, but that severe risk unfortunately does pick up for Saturday. Day. I'll talk much more about that coming up in your full forecast ahead, but here's your hour by hour. Temperatures rebound back into the lower 80s today, and at any point it can rain. We have a stalled boundary, a stalled front overhead, and that means that we have that rain risk going through the next couple of hours. We'll talk much more about that again in the full forecast, but Sarah, like you said, nice to see some improvements out there on the roads compared to just a couple of hours ago. Oh, yeah, definitely. It almost seemed like traffic was, uh, you know, the incidents were worse in terms of the number of crashes that were impacting our roadways during the 5 and 6 o'clock hour than compared to now. Right now, I am watching an accident that is slowing down drive just a little bit on 75 southbound right in the Fowler area. But overall, this is actually a pretty standard delay that we typically see through this stretch during the morning rush, adding up to a pretty average drive time, 60 minutes from Beers to I-4. Uh, farther south on 75 northbound, though, in Hillsborough County, uh, right in the Apollo Beach and Riverview area, there are some delays as drivers work their way toward uh, 60 and eventually I-4. And speaking of I-4, this is what tells me it's an unusual commute because we don't have any backups on I-4 all the way from the Lakeland area passing Plant City to 75 and the drivers are only going to hit a little bit of a delay right near 50th as they approach the Summit Connector. So this is very unusual and it's a good thing that uh, a lot of people are staying off the roadways because we did have a lot of problems earlier, but right now again, uh, things are normalizing in some of our trouble spots, James. Thank you, Sarah. Some breaking news here. Just a terrible situation out of Jacksonville. A five-year-old has passed away after a pursuit of an alleged kidnapping suspect ended in a crash in a pond. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says the pursuit lasted 30 miles along I-95 when the driver went into a retention pond off the highway. The kidnapping was reported around 7.30 last night. Officers able to capture the suspect in the pond, but they were not able to save the child. Governor DeSantis is being sued for signing the bill critics call Don't Say Gay into law earlier this week. The federal lawsuit filed yesterday morning alleges the state's new law violates the U.S. Constitution's First and Fourteenth Amendments. Plaintiffs include LGBTQ rights groups, gay parents, even young transgender students. Their issue is a key provision in the law. Under threat of legal action, it bans teachers from talking about sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. Critics call the law too vague, unfair fair and an affront to free speech. This bill is very clearly an attack on LGBTQ people. It's very clearly an effort to try to censor conversations about us. Um, and for that reason, that's why we've stood up and been, you know, so, so loud in our opposition to it. Governor DeSantis signed the bill on Monday, calling it protection for young children from a mature curriculum. His press office has dismissed the lawsuit as a, quote, political Hail Mary to undermine parental rights in Florida. Well, we're waiting to see when gas prices could drop. One day after the president officially announced he's releasing one million barrels of oil per day from reserves. Here's where gas prices stand right now. In Hillsborough County, the average is at 419 a gallon, according to AAA. It's even more in Manatee, Sarasota, and Pinellas counties. This time last year, gas was around two. 87 per gallon. We asked a Florida Gulf Coast University professor when we could see relief from that release of oil reserves. So this isn't supposed to fix things. It's supposed to maybe buy a little time to give us a little price break so that we give refiners and drillers the opportunity to step in and six months from now, maybe make more available every day here at home. 
The U.S. will restock the barrels in the reserve when oil prices are lower. A little bus could bring big change to Winter Haven, but this is no ordinary bus. Right now, the city is trying out this autonomous shuttle. In other words, it's a shuttle that moves without a driver. And one day, it could transport locals and tourists all around downtown. This morning, ABC Action News reporter Chad Mills explains why one business is already on board. In downtown Winter Haven, big things are brewing in this almost new coffee shop, Haven Coffee Roasters. So I got laid off during COVID and I knew what coffee was and I knew what good coffee was and I said, well, let's go. And I joke around by tell people my wife didn't say no. But outside these walls, there's a feeling brewing too. An excited feeling of transformation in a city trying to wake up its downtown. And this could be the city's newest cup of tea, an autonomous transit system called Coast. Think of it as a 21st century trolley without a driver, a technological marvel, a battery-powered hop-on, hop-off shuttle that mastermind Pierre Lefebvre says uses an array of cameras and lasers to get you around safely. From the market to, to a parking lot, and you choose a station like that, and decide to start when you're ready. Here in Winter Haven, it's an idea still heating up, one the city is still studying. It's definitely a work in progress. This is a baby step number one. But back at the coffee shop, so far they like what they can see and almost taste. I mean, it's, it's incredible. A shot of high-tech espresso for downtown already buzzing with energy, with potential. I see a downtown area where people really live and, and work and are entertained and never have to get in their car. Easy enough. <laughs> of course, it's not a completely new concept in our area. They've already tested similar vehicles over at USF and UCF as well. Another company introduced one in Dunedin last year. As for Winter Haven, though, we are inside this morning because it is pouring outside, but the city hopes that weather will pass and tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They'll actually have the vehicle out near the water tower downtown. They want everybody to come by, hop on and see how it works. Again, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow. We're live in Winter Haven. Chad Mills, ABC Action News. Great story, Chad. Now let's talk about vehicles people still have to drive. Pasco County Schools plans to change its school bus strategy again due to a shortage of bus drivers. The district tells ABC Action News they'll no longer be providing transportation to students who live within two miles of the school. In a statement, they tell us the state doesn't require these routes to get buses. The district plans to propose stopping these routes for middle and high school kids. Earlier this school year, Pasco County changed bell times because the bus driver shortage was causing students to get late to class. Some kids now start school as early at 710 in Pasco County. We want to stay in Pasco County now right now. We've got an update on a major traffic change coming to a congested part of that county. That work now on hold. At State Road 56 and I-75, crews are planning to add a diverging diamond interchange. Construction was scheduled to start tonight, but it's now on hold because of this weekend's rain. So there won't be closures there this weekend after all. A date to reschedule has not been, been announced yet. We'll let you know as soon as we know. FDOT says once it's complete, the diverging diamond will help reduce crashes and and congestion. A lot of nonprofits have struggled over the past two years to raise money in the pandemic. Well, now many of them are trying to make up for lost time. The Pace Center for Girls Pinellas just hosted its first in-person fundraiser in two years, and it happened just in time for a huge celebration. I had the pleasure of emceeing Pace Pinellas' signature event, the Believing in Girls Lunch. Pace Pinellas is celebrating 25 years of service this year. Pace Center for Girls is an organization that helps young girls that many would consider at risk turn their lives around. Pace calls them at promise. And those girls are the reason the staff at Pace Pinellas say they put plans B, C, and D into place during the pandemic. I think it's the resiliency of our girls and also the passion of our staff. Um, we really did everything that we could to be there for the girl, um, be it in the classroom, social services, extracurricular activities that allowed them to explore new things, even, um, even while we were virtual, even while we were uh, co-learning at home and in the classroom. At yesterday's event, Pace Girls past and present were there celebrating their success stories. Fatima Nash was one of the very first Pace Girls. She spent years in and out of the juvenile justice system, but she is now the office manager of the same program that helped her turn her life around. And Fatima made an incredible connection at yesterday's lunch. That's Fatima on the left. The woman on the right is retired Judge Deanna Farnell. These two just happened to start talking, and then they both realized their amazing connection. Fatima thought, wait a minute. 
it'll look familiar. Same thing with Judge Farnell. Turns out Judge Farnell was the one who locked Fatima up and that was the day that she decided to turn her life around. Incredible story. Uh, it's so good they can meet again under <laughs> yes, such different absolutely. circumstances. That's great. Well, last year, despite the pandemic, SPA, SPCA Tampa Bay raised more than $115,000 during its annual pet walk. Tomorrow, they try to run it back as the event is back in full force. I hope you and your dogs will join me for the SPCA's annual walk at North Straub Park in downtown St. Pete. Registration starts at 8.30, then at 9, I'll be judging the pet costume contest. The walk starts at 10. This raises money for them to help them care for thousands of homeless animals. It supports their for all shelter that doesn't turn away any abandoned pets. If you can't make it, consider donating at petwalk.org. And reminder, I'm always looking to hear about your pet adoption stories. Join my Tully's Tales Facebook page. Tell me about your pet. Got to tell you, head of the costume contest tomorrow. Oof, I have had some good, good looks at great pet costumes, so I'm going to be tough. I'm going to be a tough judge. Yeah, hopefully the rain won't put a damper yeah, on well, things yeah, out there. You yeah. know, maybe put a raincoat on your pet. Yes. They have those cute ones, you know. <laughs> they know. Mm -hmm. could, that could be a costume. <laughs> there you good go. thing it didn't happen this morning, because yeah. if it was this right. morning, it would have absolutely been washed out out there. Here's what it looks like from Anna Maria Island, our mainsail beach and camera here, showing that we are looking at cloudy skies. Not a lot of rain for Manatee and Sarasota counties this morning. You will get yours, though, over the next couple of days. We do have a better chance of rain setting up for us here even as we go into tomorrow's outlook but here's what's happening right now dry in and around the I-75, 275, I-4 area, but more moisture just to the west of Clearwater. That's going to set up a little bit more of a rainy threat for us here from, we'll say, Largo over to Tampa, West Chase within the next 30 to 45 minutes. That batch of rain moves on shore, and we're still looking at the most widespread coverage setting up in Polk County right now. Watch out for some ponding on the roads in these areas as well. We'll watch this radar, and we'll talk more about tomorrow's event, which again could lead to some severe weather by the afternoon and evening. Details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah, over to you. All right, thanks so much, and I am still watching some issues on 275 uh, right in the uh, northbound area as drivers work their way toward the Skyway. That's because of an earlier accident we have here uh, that is blocking all but one lane, not creating terrible delays, but just something to watch for 75 south, but a little bit slow, especially over the Manatee River. Eight minutes from 275 to 301. Add another seven between 301 and 70. Sarasota County, uh, really, you've kind of escaped a lot of the major issues this morning and 75 is flowing just fine uh, from the uh, county line with Manatee. All all the way south down to the Port Charlotte area, which is great. 75 northbound, a little bit slow in Apollo Beach, and then once more near 301 south of 60. Uh, no real reason for that, just kind of uh, the boarding ride right now. Eight minutes between Gibson and Drive and the Salmon. Overall, though, we have been pretty fortunate on roadways, especially in the 7 o'clock hour. I'll let you know if it stays that way. And they said, you know, would you like us to take any action? And he said no. Yeah, that's St. Pete no. native Will Packer. He produced the Oscars. Like all of us, he says he was stunned when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. What he says happened right after. That's coming up. Hey, everybody, this is Sean Daly, and coming up, I have a very cool way for you and your family to tour Safety Harbor. Psst, it's on a golf cart. You are going to love it. We ride in just a few minutes. What a difference a couple of hours makes. We've really cleared out the rain, the exception Polk County, but look just to the west of Pinellas County offshore. More rain heading our way. We'll time it out for you coming up in our full forecast in just a couple of minutes. St. Pete's own Will Packer was honored to take the prestigious spot of producer of the Oscars. He led the show's first all-black production team, making us here in the Bay Area so very proud. Absolutely, but he never thought he would have to oversee one of television's most notorious moments. He's now sharing what happened with Good Morning America, including how police were ready to arrest Will Smith right after it happened. They were saying, you know, this is battery was the word they used in that moment. They said, uh, we will go get him. We are prepared. We're prepared to get him right now. You can press charges. We can arrest him. Los Angeles police said that Chris Rock declined to press charges. Even Packer said he thought the slap was part of a skit, and he was the producer of the show. It is time now for this morning's Positively Tampa Bay story. It's where we tell you about people and places doing good here in the Bay Area. This morning, we're introducing you to a Safety Harbor woman who loves her town so much, she opened her own tour guide company. ABC Action News reporter Sean Daly hopped on her teal blue golf cart for a tour of the harbor. 
I've had people on the tour that have lived in Safety Harbor for 20 years, and they said, wow, I've never knew a lot of this stuff even existed here, and they see the town through fresh eyes. Welcome aboard Tours in the Harbor. So I'm going to show you why Safety Harbor is called the Jewel of Tampa Bay. A rolling dream realized by Holly Myers, a Safety Harbor resident and the town's biggest fan. When my family came to visit me last year. I wanted to highlight all this rich history and the businesses and some of my favorite spots around town, but there wasn't a tour that existed. So she bought a teal blue golf cart and hit the road. Her full two hour tour is $50 and includes admission to the Safety Harbor Museum, plus three food stops at Nona Slice House, the Safety Harbor Deli for Cubans, and dessert at Pisano Cheesecake. You also get a swag bag packed with drink coupons and movie tickets for Giga Waters and more. I think it's a universal thing that the longer you live in a town, the less likely you are to explore your backyard. If you wanna ride and eat and drink with tours in the harbor and you really should you can register online i have a link for you at abcactionnews.com in beautiful safety harbor i love it i'm sean daly abc action news hi sean, <laughs> hi, sean. Say hi sean you know we did our community tour in safety harbor yes. last year and that is the feel there everybody's so friendly they got the town square and everywhere you go everybody's like hey how you doing? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. such yeah. a wonderful place. It is a wonderful yeah. place. And the Safety Harbor Spa. That's a good place, too. That's, oh, my gosh. Their, their is, day passes it? are very reasonable. So treat yourself. <laughs> there you go. Treat yourself. Especially treat, on a day yourself. like today, you know? Yeah, just a nap. I mean, something to lighten you up, right? Because yeah. it's just the weather is not participating for a Friday. Good news, though, it's not Saturday, and we're not seeing this widespread rain impacting the outdoor plans just yet. That could be a possibility, though, by tomorrow night. We'll talk about that here in a second, but the radar shows that we've really quieted it down, quieted down here in Tampa and St. Pete just within the last hour or so. Just a couple of spotty showers now moving back on shore here near Indian Rocks and Bel Air Shores, but overall, compared to what it was during our four or five six o'clock time frame we were socked in with the rain a lot of that has tapered off for now look what's just west of clearwater right now we've got a big cluster of showers redeveloping this moving to the northeast is going to give us from uh, we'll say largo to clearwater to safety harbor and then heading up to tampa west chase carrollwood you all have this batch of rain heading into your direction over the next one hour or so in our inland spots no break for you just yet in lake wales and haines city also bartow seeing some heavy rain but at least in lakeland we've cleared out after picking up upwards of two to three even ice Isolated four inch totals just this morning, and we have more clusters of storms on the way off and on throughout the day today. So the good news is, is it's not going to rain consistently all day. We're going to go to a very spotty scattered storm pattern versus the widespread rain we had this morning. Temperatures will climb back into the lower 80s, and that storm chance at around 30 to 40 percent this afternoon versus being 50 to 60 percent it was this morning. And then Saturday, we've got to talk about this now. What this map shows is a level two out of five for the severe weather risk. If we were seeing a three, four, five, it would be a little more of a concern, but of course we watch all severe weather for you very closely, but this is not going to be an outbreak of severe thunderstorms, but it is something we want you to pay attention to for Saturday afternoon and evening as we time it out for you here with Futurecast in just a second. But notice today, 81 to 84, those forecast highs, but it's really the focus is on the PM here for Saturday because Futurecast shows through the morning and even through most of the afternoon, we're dry. Here's the noon time frame, but watch as we go from noon to four, north of I-4, the rain starts to return and then it dives south as we continue through the afternoon and evening. And with that area of rain, we could see isolated damaging wind gusts, a water spout or tornado not out of the question, something I'll be watching for you very closely as we head to tomorrow's forecast. Through the rest of the weekend into next week, we'll still dodge some rain, but it will be a bit more scattered versus the widespread rain after Saturday. Sarah? All right, thanks so much, Jason. Good morning, everyone. New accident to report up in Pasco County. This is 19 at 54, seeing some delays, especially on 54 as drivers approach the intersection there. Traffic building just a touch. Haven't talked about the that's very much this morning, and there's good reason for that. Not too much going on in that front. In fact, the drive time's quite normal, even for a rainy day. Nine minutes from Waters to 275, five minutes from Independence Parkway. 275 northbound, just west of that 275 and 75 interchange in Manatee County. Still seeing some delays here as drivers try to work their way toward the Howard Franklin. That's because of an earlier accident. Overall, though, we've been quite fortunate, even on I-4 westbound between 75, uh, between Plant City and 75. Thanks for joining us on this hour of Good Morning Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Let's get your day started. This is ABC Action News, taking action 
for you. Hi, good Friday morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jason Adams. A much quieter pattern out there right now for most of the area after seeing a lot of storm activity from 2 to about 7 a.m. And then as we approach 8 o'clock, the bulk of it has shifted inland. However, that's not going to last long because just offshore, we've got more rain developing here to the west of Clearwater and Indian Rocks Beach. And this is what's going to be making its approach to the coast within the next 10 to 15 minutes. So if you're at Clearwater, Palm Harbor, Tarpon Springs, eventually crossing over through the Oldsmar and Safety Harbor areas, you're going to run into a little bit more of this action coming on shore here and that may stay north of St. Pete and also will clip northwestern sections of Tampa toward West Chase and Carrollwood. Still looking at the heaviest of the rain over the last couple of hours, finally pushing across Highway 27 here through Haines City back to Lakeland where we picked up several inches of rain as well. So some localized ponding on the roads, maybe isolated flood concerns here as we continue to see this off and on heavy rain risk. But the good news is, is at least for the rest of today, the forecast does not focus on a widespread threat for rain. It'll be more scattered versus the widespread soaking rains we had this morning. So air temperatures, They'll get up into the low to mid 80s today under mostly cloudy skies, but a little sunshine will try and sneak in from time to time as we head through the afternoon. More rain on the way for Saturday afternoon and evening after starting out dry for Saturday morning. Sarah. All right. Thanks so much, Jason. Good morning, everybody. Tracking an accident up in Pasco County in the Newport Ritchie area close to or to uh, Elfers. Actually, this is 54 at 19. Watch for delays on 54, especially westbound approaching that intersection. Uh, the vets is issue free right now. 12 minutes from Gun Highway, nine minutes from Waters down to that intersection with 275. And speaking of 275. This is the view right now near the 75 and 275 interchange uh, close to uh, right in Manatee County where we do have all lanes clear following an accident that had uh, most of the lanes blocked there and that was creating a delay but now things are shaking out for drivers. No problems on the Skyway or even as you continue northbound on 275 eventually crossing the Howard Franklin into downtown Tampa. Uh, overall it appears that maybe a lot of people stayed home from work didn't want to deal with any messy issues on the roadway. I say that because look at this drive time on I-4 westbound between Alexander and McIntosh. That is an, ex an exceptional drive time. So uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Follow me on Twitter at Tampa Bay Traffic.